welcome to another thrilling, epic, outstanding, mind-blowing episode of the Power Series. I am yours truly, Samuel Adrani. First of all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever it is, wherever you find yourself. I hope you're keeping safe and I hope you have a beverage, whether cold or warm. Um, and then you have your laptops ready to sprinkle some API on your Power Apps, Power uh, Automate and then potentially Power Virtual Agent. Welcome to another episode of the Power Series. This is your one and only show that brings you closer and a more casual feel of your power addicts all around the world. In today's episode, we have an amazing person, an amazing facility on the show. You don't want some, you don't want to miss this. So, hey, tweet, call a friend, text a friend, message a friend, to also call a friend and message or tweet a friend to get onto the show as we're going to have some fun. <laughs> Yes, and UI flows amazing. Yeah, UI flow as well. Welcome to all of you joining online from Twitch, from YouTube, from Twitter, from Facebook, from um, Mixer. All of you, welcome, welcome, welcome. As you know, before we get into it, I would always want to tell you what's happening next, you know, so that you can get connected. So let me go and quickly give you this quick announcement, and then I'm going to introduce our guest for tonight's show. So next power addict hangout yep that's going to be myself and my power sister for you all the way from nigeria she's going to be talking to you about her journey onto the power platform and i'll be doing some demos that has to do with some love when iot gets some love affection for the power platform you don't want to miss that that's happening on april 14th 2020 is a live stream so make sure you join that and with that out of the way with that out of the way folks it is my single and only pleasure to invite and welcome onto the show i think we're going to use a hand of applause with a round of applause i am going to welcome our guest for tonight's show that API guy. Vivek, you are live and welcome to the Power Series. Hey, thank you for having me. I, I don't know if I can meet your energy levels, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be on the show and uh, contribute uh, and show the API stuff that I have. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming. I think the first time I actually saw what you did was on John's show. And you know, oh, okay. John was you know saying all. I was like, wait a minute. And then I started following and you know just watching some of the things you were doing. And I was like, no, yeah. I need to get Vivek on the show. That API guy because a lot of the questions I get from people is some, apart from the connectors you have in you know Flow and all that, can I connect? Can I use my own APIs? And the answer is mm -hmm. yes, you can use your own APIs. You can create your own custom connectors. But as we're going to see from the God of API himself. <laughs> He's going to show you how he does that. So stick and stay, and he's going to give you all that. But first of all, as we do on the show, Vivek, people will want to know, my audience will want to know who Vivek is, how you got sure. into technology, very important, mm -hmm. and most importantly, how you came about, you know, how you got into the power, on, onto the power platform. We really want to know that. Sure. So I actually had a boarding slide deck for that. Awesome. And maybe we can just share that. <laughs> sure, yeah, go for it. You can, if you have the slide, yeah. just put the slide up, and the show is all yours. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, make sure I am presenting the right stuff. <laughs> Too many screens. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I pray God that... of Demo Day will be very, you know, gracious, <laughs> you know, to us. Yeah. Uh, okay, give me one second. Am I showing the right screen? Uh, okay, it's loading in the bit. Yep. The magic of APIs, we can yeah. see ya. All right, so yeah, I the, so let me actually kind of talk about a bit about myself. Um, so I am a business applications MVP. Currently, my day job is a senior IT ERP analyst. I manage Power Platform and Dynamics for our company, and um, I'm a Power, uh, power Apps and Flow for Power Automate. I should change that. <laughs> <laughs> user group leader for Ohio State. So we've been doing some user group meetings and being uh, addicted, power addicted to Power Apps and Power Automate and the community for three years now. Wow. Um, so yeah, my journey kind of started, how would I say this? So 
specifically to APIs, it started maybe one or one and a half years back. Um, and it was when Power Automate and when it was called Flow, it started this feature where you can send data back to Power Apps mm. from Flow. And that was like, wow, I mean, I can do so much now because till then you could use custom connectors and stuff, but I didn't like custom connectors for some reason then. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, that's too much coding and stuff for me. So yeah, my background is nothing. I have not, I don't have a computer science background. I didn't do any coding at any point of time, but I have, I've self taught a lot of things to myself. Mm. Um, so I always try to pick things, whatever I need to learn, and try to apply it in my project. But yeah, that's it. I don't, I don't have a formal background. So even APIs, I knew nothing about it one and a half years back. Really? <laughs> yep, nothing about it. And that's, then I. That's interesting. Yep. I mean, sorry to interject, but then it's. I, sure, I yeah, just want to lay emphasis on this so that you know, our viewers would know that when we mean less code, more power, this is what we mean, because yep. that's the story. You know, people think you need to have, you know, a degree in CS or be, you know, a hardcore developer to do this. Guys, you heard it from himself. He's now the API god. You know, Vivek, you know, continue. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, I mean, that that's a good point. I mean, I don't have any background in it. I didn't learn any API stuff. Even now, I don't know a lot about it. It's just that I like to connect to a lot of different APIs and try to bring that data into my Power Apps and Flows so that I can kind of enrich my existing data or do something fun with it, right? With There are so many third-party APIs that you can connect to. So yeah, that's how my journey started. Awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go. So I, what I wanted to cover today um, is this and like kind of give an overview of what API is, types of authentication. And then I have, I think around 15 APIs <laughs> that I'm going to show you a quick demo of. All the better, Vivek, like I mentioned, yeah. you know, the show is, once once you get started, the show is all yours. I'm just here to fascinate I'm, you. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to try go. to do it fast <laughs> forward. I'm going to do it like in 10 minutes or five minutes, I'll show you 15 APIs. Wow, wow. But but, hold, yeah. but before before you go to your agenda, um, there's a quick question that has come in that I want to ask. Sure. They want to know why you chose the name, that API okay. guy. Um, I would say that, so I, I, the reason why I started, so I didn't make any content one and a half years back. Mm. Uh, I had something somewhere started, I was doing some videos with, uh, other people on their channels, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't start any content. But then when I got into API, when I connected the first time, I was like, oh, I can do a lot of stuff with this. Mm. And then I realized, oh, not a lot of people are doing this because this feature was just introduced. So let me start making something. And I was like, okay, what should I name this channel now? What should I call it? I don't want to use my name for some reason. I was like, man, that's too boring. <laughs> so I was like, okay. <laughs> API was the reason why I started this. Yeah. So let's let's call it that. I mean, that API guy basically who, who so that's kind of the name I like then mm. that people will realize that okay, this guy just knows API stuff and yeah. he's making content for that. So yeah. That, that was the reason. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, and it you really caught the attention of people and you're doing right that. So hey, the show is all yours. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, feel free to stop me at any point and if there are any questions be happy to kind of go through them. So before I jump into even this agenda, I know a lot of people always have some basic questions and I think we already covered this. I'm not a coder, can I do this? I am not a coder and I did this. So yes, you can. Don't get scared of HTTP requests, don't get scared of get, post, put. It's, it's very simple and I'll try to simplify some things today, hopefully and make you start building an API or start working with an API. Um, so this is another question which I get a lot. So when I started, it wasn't, HTTP wasn't a premium license, even custom connector wasn't premium. Yeah. And then two months into it, it became premium. <laughs> I was like, ah, now people are not gonna watch my videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but, <laughs> Yes, it does require a PM license, but you can always 
go and get a community plan for yourself and start building whatever you want. I mean, community plan gives you access to all the premium connectors, HTTP, everything. It's only for individual use, but you can at least test it. So yeah. the reason, I mean, the way I define it is try to connect to something, build something, and if it has value in your business or in your personal project, then buy the license. It's not that expensive. Uh, so if, if you see value for getting third-party data into your existing thing, it's it's worth it. But yet till then, if you want to just evaluate, you can evaluate for free. So and, don't, and also, Vivek, don't get into to, this. Yeah. Just to add to that, um, I think I mentioned a couple of times on my show that we also mm-hmm. discovered that if you create the Office 365 developer account, that gives you up to 12 months of developer access. Yep. You have all that also for free, yeah. including yep. even Power Virtual Agent and all that. So guys, check that out. I have actually a blog post on that. So it's just to throw that. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually have my developer tenant, but I was like, yeah, that gets into a bit more like you have to go through <laughs> that, creating their developer tenant and all that. But <laughs> if you don't want to do even that, yeah. just get a community plan. Yeah. It's You can use your current existing email address for that. Uh, so yeah, why API? Like, why should I even get into this? Uh, so Power Platform, one thing doesn't have a connector for everything. <laughs> so you need to, if you want to connect to third-party sources, you need to use APIs, and you can enrich your existing data with a lot of publicly available info or any other kind of system that you we want to connect to where you have your data. You can connect to it and enrich your existing data. So I think this is the main reason why you want to use APIs. Um, so this is like a very simple, basic diagram of what an API is basically. So if the blue box, think about it as your application, you send a request to some data repository somewhere, and you're asking for some data, you make that request and it gives back you a response. If that's not very clear, I've seen this video where it explains uh, by kind of giving an example of a restaurant. So let's imagine you are going to a restaurant and you you want to place an order for something, but you need, I mean, your waiter needs to be there and like take the the order from you. So he basically, or he or she takes the order, puts it in and takes it to the chef. So that's your get request. You're giving a request that yes, I want this, this food, Please prepare it for me. But somebody needs to communicate that. So the waiter is taking that and then bringing the food back to you. So that's your response. So it's as simple as that. Don't get scared about APIs. It's uh, simple. It's it's a way to connect to a lot of systems, but um, not by actually getting into the system. The API is kind of a layer on top of their data to, to, to share their data with anybody who wants to get access to it. Of course, there are um, sometimes some licenses to it. You need to buy it sometimes. But a lot of APIs give you a lot of data, uh, like a lot of calls for free. And then if you need it for uh, some business application for a lot of requests, then you go into buying uh, the API, um, the license for it. Uh, Again, boring slide, but Types of authentication, <laughs> there's like no authentication, basically just a public API. There's basic authentication, not the good one. It's username and password being sent over your request, which is not the best way to do it. But it's still, there are a lot of APIs that give that kind of option. There's an API key. Uh, so you generate an API key and you basically put that in your request um, so that it recognizes that you are requesting it. And then there is OAuth, which is used quite a lot, OAuth 2.0. And OAuth 1.0 is more of a signature-based control. I know Twitter uses that. So OAuth is one thing which is being used by a lot of um, companies today to add, to give access to their data. So I'm not going to get into a lot of the details about this because that's just the boring stuff. Uh, there are and I'm not an expert in explaining that as well. I would say there are a lot of videos available online to get more information about what's OAuth, what's API key. 
But what I'll show you is examples of how you can use that. Awesome. All right. So uh, there, <laughs> there are around 14 APIs on this. There were some which I tried to connect today, and there was, for some reason, were not able to connect. Uh, maybe because my API key expired or something, but I could, <laughs> I could increase this list as well. Uh, but yeah, what I'm going to do in the next, at least, I, I, I'm hoping five or 10 minutes, uh, is to show you a demo of each of these things. Mm -hmm. And then, because you want to see how it actually yeah. helps, and then we'll get into like creating it and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, are you guys ready? <laughs> yep, we are more than ready. All right. So uh, just to, and yeah, this is going to happen, I knew, and that's why I'm going <laughs> to make it like a 10 minute thing because yeah. it always refreshes it. Uh -huh. uh, so the first one, Bing Image Search API. Um, I'll, so basically, it searches for images using the Bing API. And what I'll do is I'll search for Power Addicts. Uh, I can put all these restrictions, color, license, and all that. I'm just going to put all for now, and then click Search. Um, and uh, there you go. It searches all the images from the Bing API and gives me all the images. Hmm. Uh, See, I can filter it by license, by size, and all that stuff, aspect ratio, image type, everything. And uh, I can get basically access to all. So you can use it in your applications where you want to give access to people. You can create an image library from it. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the first one. Next one uh, is, I think, uh, oops, not this. Let's see. Uh, I know why it's not working because my camera is. Oh, yeah. Teams is using it's, the camera. Yeah, yeah. We, there uh, should be a way to go around this. You know, this problem yeah, of when you're using. Yeah, it's. Do, oops. That's why I played it in edit mode. I knew this might become an issue. Come on. Okay. You might be able to use this one. So this is a. A face API, so it will recognize my face. So let's see this. I'm trying to see what I'm showing here. <laughs> I, okay. 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 Cool. We're waiting uh, for the data age to 26, oh. gender, male, baldness, 0.12. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happiness, one. Everything else is zero. So yeah, I mean, it sees my face and it put it by a rectangle as well. So you can use face API. This is. Azure Cognitive Services Face API um, to detect these things. All right, next one. Uh, let's see which one was this. Uh, YouTube, so YouTube Data API and YouTube Analytics. So this one um, is basically getting data from YouTube and basically creating my own YouTube kind of a viewing deck so I can kind of curate what I want to watch and uh, just watch that and not get distracted by all the other videos available on YouTube. <laughs> uh, so what it's trying to do is it's pulling from all the channels that I have already favorited. Um, it's pulling the videos from all those. And what I'll show you here um, in a second, and it gets a bit slow for some reason because it's trying to pull all those things. Um, but let's see, okay. So I have like a favorites. And all these are my favorites, right? And this was some time back. So you can see Shane Young, 32.7K subscribers. Wow. So many views. So yeah, I can see all these here. I can add a channel. And Samuel, you have a channel, right? Oh, yeah, YouTube? I do. Yeah. Okay, so what's it called? That would be A-D-R-A-N-Y-I. Okay, A-D-R-A-N-Y-I. -E yep. Okay. Let's see if this works. I haven't tried it for a while. Oh, there you yeah, go. There so you I go. can add it to my favorites. <laughs> um, and what it will do is it will, hopefully this works. Yep, it's added to the favorites. And then it should show up. Yeah, Samuel, oh, yeah, 174. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2.5K views. Gradually, uh, we're getting there, gradually. Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's not the fastest. I am not probably the. Uh, I'm not optimized it very well. Uh, 
but yeah, and then I if I go back to the home, it should be it should be loading his channel. Yeah, there you go. It's oh, loading his episode yeah. and stuff. So I can see it from here. Um, the other cool thing is I can click on it, and then it will. Um, it also so it, you're not using any tags, Samuel. I mean, that's not good. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> I need to be doing that. I mean, thanks. You know, I the, I think Alan mentioned this. Uh, I promise I'll do a good job at that right after the show. I'll go tag all of them. <laughs> but yeah, so what I can do is I can also see tags. And what I've done here is I am actually filtering. I can use those tags to filter the content. Mm, okay. um, and, but yeah, let's see. I can search for the tag. Again, as I told you, it's... Not, so I can see power apps. So these are all the tags that my all my favorite people are using. Um, so Microsoft Flow, I know because people still search for Microsoft Flow. They don't search for Power Automate. There are still some videos. So I can select that tag and then it shows up that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm seeing now all the Power Automate, most of the John Levex videos. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's the YouTube data stuff. Uh, let's see which one was this, and it's gonna try to load things. Um, uh, this one is my MVP. So I use an app to to submit my contributions for MVP. So that okay. it uses the MVP API. Oh. Uh, but what I've done is I've connected to YouTube and Twitter in that. And I can submit my content directly from YouTube and Twitter oh, to okay. the MVP uh, API. So otherwise, I have to manually enter all that, and that gets really cumbersome. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I never knew you know there was an API for that. I mean, obviously, these are some of the things you get when you talk to the god of the API. <laughs> <laughs> so while it does that, and I might have to take it away because it might load my contribution. Some of them are NDA. Uh, uh, I know I, I might have to show that a bit later, but uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, let's let's do the other one for now. Um, I, I'll go back to the MVP one in in a while. So the Google Vision API. Uh, so I'm using. So right now I'm showing the Crest toothpaste because that's a good contender for this kind of content. So let's uh, click on this, and I'm using the Google Vision API to identify what this image is. So this is the label. It's a toothpaste. 0.9, probably seven. <laughs> Google thinks this is probably a snack. <laughs> uh, then uh, the web. So there are different entities that you like properties that you get of the image. So label, web entities, it's a product. Um, and then similar images. So this it returns me all the similar images that I found. Uh, so if this is the Google's uh, Vision API. Um, sim and similar to that, there's a um, I remember there's a Bing or Cognitive Services Vision API as well, which I think I have a demo somewhere. But let's let's get into the next one. So this one is the custom Google search. Um, so it's so let me show you an option. Um, let's do CDS. So this is going to search within Microsoft.com. Okay any results. So it's using oh. the Bing or custom Google search. So you can define a website. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say you want to build a search engine just for your website internally, right? Or for a customer um, facing thing where you just want to show results from your website. So it pulls up results from Microsoft.com um, about CDS. And so you can so you can restrict results to a specific website using this API. So it's called the custom Google search API. Um, all right, I know I'm going fast because I need to show you everything, guys. Um, <laughs> I think I already showed you the face one. Yep. This one was the Google Vision API. Uh, there is a place search API within it mm. as well. So Google's uh, thing. This is. Going to be so it searches for places within Google. So it's Google. It's called Google's Place Search API. Okay. So I can put in an address and it will search for that address. And if it's a location like a public 
location, it will give me a rating what people have mm, given it. Okay. I think this is something different for some reason. I don't know why it's showing California. But yeah, I mean, there's a Google Play search API that you can use as well to, to curate uh, addresses, I would say. Um, now, this one is a good one. Um, so this is using um, Azure Cognitive Services Vision API, not the Google one. Okay. So it searches the content within it, and then it passes that data to, and I don't know, that's not a good one, but uh, it passes the data to Walmart's API and gets me similar, like if it had identified the correct product, it would have mm. <laughs> given yeah, me the yeah, right yeah, one. Okay. Let's see if we can get, uh, okay, somewhere. Let's see if we can get a better, this thing. Uh, so it gives me the result, and you can see it gives me the price data and everything as well. Uh, I might get, okay, something okay, yeah, better, but yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, of course not, it's just to show you the capability, but you can scan any yeah. product like this. It gets the details of the product and you can then pass it to any uh, product API. Amazon also has one which you can use to do that. I'm suspecting uh, that because it's a toothpaste, you know, when you go to mm -hmm. site and you buy a toothpaste, like, oh, people who bought toothpaste, you know, bought these other items because I could see a mouthwash. Yeah. Like stuff. So yeah, it's giving yeah. us, you know, all those suggestive things as well. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Next one. Uh, this one actually was one of the first ones that I built. Um, so it's, it's something which I actually use on a regular basis. So let's see if I want to watch an English horror, not a history, horror movie, I'll just click on suggest a movie and it does a random thing um, and it suggests me the movie name. Mm. Um, actually, let me put some more because I know in some so it gives me the IMDb rating oh. in the East uh, and then if it has a, a, a trailer, it will return that as well. So let's see, I think we might get for this one. Yeah, you see? Gives me the oh. YouTube video trailer for that. So it uses this thing um, called DMDB and OMDB API. It's mm -hmm. basically publicly available, or not publicly, you need to register an app and get an API key, but it's free. Um, so yeah, you can use those movie databases to get mm. random movies. So yeah, I, I actually use it to get some kind of just get well, some suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Vivek, hold on. So um, if you can go back to the app. So one of the things I want to do, because pe pe people are asking questions, is yeah. uh, <laughs> as you're showing the app, I'm not sure you might be able to show all, like the features might not be the same for the final app that we're going to build from scratch. But people want <laughs> to know how you did the language selection. Is it a button? Is it a toggle? And then also when oh, you sure. click on the cog on the top right, something popped up. What's, what's that? <laughs> Okay, so I, I might be compromising my API keys, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so this is, um, how would I say? So I have, uh, basically can think of it as a toggle and I'm using this to, sorry. Um, so there is, uh, how would I say this? So I have this, and actually let me open it on my uh, edit mode so that I can show you that. But uh, yeah, basically it's it it's a group of things which is on the right of the the app which doesn't show up. Okay. Uh, but when I click on this button, it moves the x coordinate of all these things to mm. to this value. And then I have done some motion related stuff which Brian Dang Eight Bit Classroom has taught everyone, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How to use some kind of sine waves and all that yeah, stuff yeah. to to have a gradual motion. But yeah, basically I'm moving the X. Um, so if you see here, ah. I have all these things on the right hand side, and then they move to the left. Uh, and this one also I got asked quite a bit. It's basically a gallery of mm. buttons. And every time I click on a button, it adds it, I think, to a collection. Um, now, I have made these apps quite a long time back, so I'm, I apologize if I don't know everything about it. Uh, but I think it takes, so yeah, when I am sending this, um, yeah, it's basically concatenating um, all the values that I'm getting from that. Oh, okay. 
into a string and then I'm using like an R thing. So, uh, so, so, so the thing is I have videos for all these, that okay. thing that I'm showing okay. today. And I have a link to all those in my slides, which I'll be sharing. And you awesome. can go and look at all those videos. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yep. I think we can proceed now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The next one, this is a basic one, and I'm showing you how to do this as well, uh, but it's getting the NASA's astronomy picture of the day. Uh, and I can choose a date. Let's go back in time. Let's take 1st January and take the NASA astronomy picture of the day. And there you go. It returned me. It, so this is a public API. Oh, okay. And then it gives me the description and the picture and everything. Um, so yeah, that's the NASA one, and I think is that the last one? Oh, Spotify. That's another cool one. Um, so I've connected to the Spotify API, so I can search for tracks. Let's see if my demo gods help me for this one. <laughs> um, I like Coldplay. Let's search for that. So it will, yeah, okay, I have the the songs of Coldplay, some of them from Return from the Spotify API. This is one of my favorite songs. Let's see, I have my Spotify open here. Hopefully it plays. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I think, yeah, oh. okay. For some reason it's, hmm. Oh. Okay. That's not the one, but I think it needs to have a song playing and oh, then okay. it should do it. Oh, okay. I didn't. There you go. It played it, yeah, and I can change it. I'm changing it with these button clicks. Oh. And as you can see, my phone's up here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I can connect to Spotify's API. And do, there's a lot of other things I can do with it, but yeah. Uh, again, this is also a blog post I have. You can go in and watch that as well, uh, how to connect to Spotify API. Uh, I, and the last one is we use this for our Power Addicts Hangout. Um, we use a lot of automation for that. Um, and I'm gonna show you quickly what we are doing, because I, again, have a separate video for that, which you can watch um, and while it loads that. So what we do is I create an event in my calendar uh, with the name Power Addicts Hangout. And then when I do that, it starts this flow mm. where it takes the description, the team's link, it extracts that. Mm. Um, and then it connects, it creates an ICS file so that we can share that ICS for you. Then it creates a share link, which we can basically, this is for the Teams link. And then I connect to the rebrandly API. So it's similar to Bitly if you have used short links. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm creating this dynamic link um, using this rebrandly API. So it okay. creates these. Uh, and I'm again compromising my API keys here. <laughs> you have to change all of them after the show. I think you should you should create you should create a power automate so that if you do a show and you expose them, you can use you know you can use one of the flick buttons. I wish or I anything. could do that. Just yeah. And you know request all that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what are, we are doing is we are creating the short links, updating the short links, and then all those short links are uh, being shared in a tweet with you guys so that you can just click on those links and download the ICS or join the teams. So yeah, I just create the event. Everything happens on the uh, background. Okay. We create a WordPress post. Uh, that's also actually a, a custom, uh, like a shared WordPress, sorry, oh. a self-hosted WordPress. So it's not okay. the WordPress connector. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we connect to it and then we do this. So yeah. There's a lot of things that we do that uh, for this. And then we also send it to uh, as a DM. Um, so we're using a Twitter API uh, with oh. an Azure function to send it to as a DM to all to some of the people in the Power Addicts team um, so that they can promote the tweet then. So yeah, 
<laughs> I wish I could show you everything in this call, but we only have it less than uh, some time. So, okay. Uh, are there any questions at this point? <laughs> yeah, so another question was, um, how do you get the API keys? Um, mm -hmm. and, and what tools do you use to, you know, interact with the APIs as you work with them? Yeah, so I, I knew that question will come up. Uh, so one was, what tool do I use? I use Postman uh, quite a bit. If you haven't heard about it, uh, let me see if I can quickly show that. Uh, I don't have it open. But yeah, Postman is basically the way to connect to your um, any APIs. You can put a request or I mean, actually, let me see if I can quickly open it because I can show you how it looks like on my side. Uh, but yeah, you can connect to any kind of authentication in there and it's super easy to do that compared to going ahead and creating custom connector and kind of going through that process. Um, but before you do that, you can test it in Postman if it's working fine. Um, so while it loads, I'll show you actually how to get like a API key. So let's go into Google's Cloud Console. Google has a lot of good APIs, so you probably want to use that for some project if you want to just test out something. Um, so what we'll do is we we'll, so just search Google Cloud Console. You can sign up for a free account, which mm -hmm. is for a year, and even after that, there are free credits, so you can use that. Um, what we'll do is I will create. Uh, so once you log in, it will ask you to create a new project, um, and I should yeah. And then actually, it won't, yeah, so let me create a new project. Um, just name it something. And uh, huh, okay, yeah. So I'll just say demo guy guy create. Um, so yeah, if, if you see it has created this project, uh, actually, I need to change that project. So yeah, basically you want to go to just whatever API you want to get access to, put the product name and mm -hmm. put API after that and hit search on Google. Okay. <laughs> and then you get basically an API kind of homepage, which is generally like developers.something.com. Mm -hmm. And then you need to register an app and you get API keys. I know it's getting a bit slow here today. Uh, but yeah, I'll show you how to do it for Google at least. Um, and so yeah, this is the project that I just created. And then I'll go in here, APIs and services, credentials. Um, and then I just need to create a new set of credentials, create, and then it gives me different options. Oh, so okay. API key is simple. So I can just click on API key. Um, and again, this is, it's created this key and I can use this API key now, um, for any Google stuff. Now you're not, I mean, you need to enable the products in here. So what you need to do is Google has a lot of APIs. So you need to go in and search for that API. So you go into the library and then let's say I want to have uh, the YouTube API. So I went, oops. Uh, your analytics, let's say, and then I just go in okay. and click enable, and now it's enabled for this project. So now I can use YouTube Analytics API, uh, that key that I have to to connect to any YouTube Analytics API endpoint. So um, actually, let's let's show you how to. This is the NASA one, okay. um, which is very simple. Um, so what I have is my trigger is a Power Apps button. Mm -hmm. um, I have an HTTP request. Uh, so you can use that HTTP request action. And then my method is get because I'm, so, so yeah, difference between get and post. 
get is basically you're trying to get something <laughs> from the API, but post is you are trying to send some data. Um, and then how do I say this? You are you are adding something to the database. So let's say I want to tweet um, I, I'm to so I'm using the Twitter API, so I'm posting it because I'm putting into the database basically, right? I'm putting a new tweet into the database. Uh, so I do use a post request, but in this case, I'm just getting the data from the NASA's API. So if you go into the NASA's API, uh, the documentation, they'll have the URL to use for it. So this will be that api.nasa.gov, and then they'll have an endpoint. That, that's what they call it. So Within their API, they'll have different endpoints. There might be an endpoint to get the NASA's astronomy picture of the day. There might be an endpoint to get some other data. Uh, but this one is called slash planetary slash apoc. And then the API key, they don't have an basically an API key. So they okay. just tell you to put a demo key. And that's basically an open API. And then you put ampersand date equals whatever oh, date okay. you get from power apps. Power okay. Uh, and I think I should, yeah, so I think it should be just one percent. I don't know why it, okay. So this is how you create your kind of query or URL as well. So it's generally that the endpoint ends here, and then you put question mark, the, the parameter equals something, question and the other parameter equals something, and you keep doing that. In some, time, some cases, you, you can actually put that query here itself, or you can put it in the URL. There are some headers sometimes that need to add. But what I would recommend is most of the API documentation have an API explorer as well. Yeah. So you just go into the, you go there, try some example, and they will create the URL for you. Just copy paste that and change the, the parameters that you want to change. If it's a variable that you want to give it as an input, change it with a power apps variable or a flow manual button in variable. But yeah, it, I, I, as I told you, I didn't know anything about this, but I, <laughs> I deconstructed things and started using it in my kind of uh, flows and power apps. Um, so quick one, Vivek. Yeah. Um, so the question is, do you create like the flow first before you create the power app, or you can initiate that from when you start creating the app? Um, so this is generally m my way of doing things. So I, I first find out the API. I find out how to create an app, get in the documentation, get the URL, put it in Postman, and check whether it's working and find with what they have to find there. So once I have verified that, yes, it's working in Postman, then I get into uh, actually a flow with a manual button and then create that flow with the HTTP request and then um, not having any response or anything. So my process is just to first see if flow is able to do that. <laughs> Uh, and then once the flow is able, it's working successfully, then I connect it to Power Apps. Um, because sometimes, so the other thing which a lot of, if you are starting with APIs, JSON is going to become your friend. <laughs> yes, I was just about to ask that because that was another question that came in, you know, that, you know, JSON has to be your friend. So yeah. I mean, if you can just talk a little about that. Sure. So JSON is nothing but, uh, how do I say this? A, a beautiful way to structure a table uh, <laughs> or a code friendly way of structuring a table. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. And there are different, I mean, you can use, uh, so a lot of times you will have to, when you're using post request, you'll have to put your, I mean, inputs in the body, because that's where you need to define your, kind of, if it's like a tweet, right? If you're sending a tweet, you need to uh, tell the, the content of the tweet and all that, and that's probably in the body request. Uh, so you put like, uh, 
so this is how your JSON starts mm -hmm. <laughs> between two curly brackets, and then you'll have key, key name, and then colon, and then value. value. Okay. And that's it. It's basically more keys and values and more keys and values. That's it. And you need to, I mean, you, so they'll, again, the API explorer of that API will show you the response that you get from that API because all the responses that you get from APIs will be a JSON. Um, and once you get that, you just copy paste, you copy that JSON mm. and you need to generate a schema for that. So again, I know we have very less time. <laughs> so I have a video for you, which I have the maximum number of views on, 7.7K views. I wow. don't have any views on any other of my video that much. <laughs> Return data from Flow to Power Apps mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. 7,000 views. <laughs> because, you know, that was, so, I, was, I was going to ask the next thing, because, like, okay, yeah. we've seen that. So how do we get this data into Power Apps, you know, and just use it again? Yeah. So what I have done here, um, so let's actually show you that. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you. So this is, and this would have run just a few minutes ago. Um, so when I send that request to NASA's API, it gives me this output, which is this. Mm. It's this whole JSON. Mm. And what I'll do is I'll just copy this whole. So it's basically, easy. if you see, it has the date, as explanation, it has the yeah. URL of that image, type and all that. So I'm copying that, then um, click on edit. So there are two ways to send that data back. Mm. One is there is there's a better way if you don't want to use response, if you think that's too core way to do it, <laughs> there is a respond to power apps. Oh. Uh, so you oh, use a respond okay. to power app or flow. Then I put an output text ah. uh, URL. So, and this, and now you'll see, oh, I don't see all the values that I got. Mm -hmm. So you need to use parse JSON. Uh -huh. So you say, I want to parse. So parse is basically, flow is too dumb to understand it. <laughs> it needs an action to understand what that JSON is mm -hmm. and what uh, this, so it needs a sample of it to understand mm -hmm. what keys and values are in there. So the content for this JSON is the body that I get. Work, yeah. Now schema, it's basically what the structure of that uh, output is. I'll paste that, mm -hmm. click done. So it will generate the scheme, schema mm -hmm. for me. So it basically, if you see it's identifying, it's, a, it's an object. object. Okay. And it has different types. It has a string. Mm -hmm. It has, mm -hmm. basically all of them are strings in this case. Um, and then I hit, uh, and then I'll get if I. So you see, ah, yeah, I, so it's I, I didn't even the say, data. Yeah. So I can put HTURL, and then um, back in my in my Power App, I will, let's let's remove this and do it. Um, so you, I just need the URL, and I can passing more details as well. But hopefully, uh, I, I don't know if I, uh, yeah, I think I have it in mode as well. Uh, but yeah, what you'll do is in the Power App, you'll call the flow uh -huh. and then you'll set a variable, set URL, comma, and then you start that flow run. Okay. And after that flow, you put a dot and then it will give you URL. The URL, oh, okay. Okay. So that's how you get. It. So this is a simple way to do it. If you want the whole thing, you just use the response and pass the whole data back mm -hmm. to Power App. So it will, and you can collect it in a table, in a collection. Okay. So so, so the quest thing is yeah. in in your in your experience working with APIs and Power Platform, what would you say is the best practice? Passing the whole data as a response to the app, or using the response to Power App? Actually. I, we could go a little, we could go a bit more over time if you can, you know, okay. just work out sure, a yeah. very simple application yeah, where we call the API and then we, we see the two parts. Like I mentioned, the show is yours. I can give you, if you want <laughs> the whole day, I can give it to you. We have yeah. time because we want to learn. Okay. So we are, we are happy to go over a couple more minutes. So feel free. Okay. All right. So let's open that NASA one and we'll do the both, both the ways. Um, first, we'll just 
pass the URL, uh, and then the next one we pass the whole data. Um, the I generally prefer to just send the whole thing back uh, using the response action because I just have everything, and then I can do whatever I want to do in Power App. Uh, but in some cases, you don't want everything. You just want a specific thing. And in that case, you probably just want one value and just send that back. So let's do that. Uh, so, so this is my... Vivek, yeah, just so ahead. you know, everybody on the channel right now is up for it. We're ready to go extra extra minute, <laughs> extra time just to see you do this for us. So sure. feel free. Yeah. So as you see, I still have the old app version for this because this app is old. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the data sources, yeah, this thing really pisses me a bit, but I have to go and do the old data source way. Uh, so one thing which you generally have to do is you have to remove the flow connection and then add it again. Uh, it just doesn't refresh that way if you change something on the flow side. Um, so what we'll do is I will copy this thing because I don't want to lose this expression. It will overwrite it on the button if I connect. So I'll click button action power automate and then search for that flow. <laughs> if I can get that. Uh, yeah, this one. And okay. So it has added that. So what I'll do is I'll generally just remove that and add my expression again because I don't want to write that expression again. So I'll do set um, NASA A pod URL. Um, this is my flow name dot run. And then so this is where my flow ends here. So this is where the run ends and then if I put a dot after that, you'll see it gets me, uh, actually it's giving me all the things for some reason. Oh, I, I probably didn't save it. Uh, okay, let me save it. I will do that again. Uh, let's go back here and actually let me go back and remove that flow. And add it again. Okay. So again, we will click on the button, action, power automate, and then search for that flow. Okay. All right. And then again, paste this. But so, okay. So now I put a dot after that run. And if you see, I just got the URL now. Yeah. So this is that URL that I'm getting back from the flow. Um, so let's put that. So I've, if you saw, I've set it to a variable. So I click on this now for this date. And then I'll get a URL of, for it. Um, so right now that URL is in NASA A pod. And then let me put a label and add that NASA A pod. Come on. <laughs> Don't do this. Uh, I think, hmm, that's strange. Maybe I didn't change, should change the name for something because there's a collection as well. Oh, okay. Uh, Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. Hopefully this works. Hmm. Could it be that oh. they are binding to things that is not getting in the URL in their response? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, it succeeded here. So yeah, let's actually, I mean, at least we can see the flow here. So yeah, if, if it did pass the, the value, it got the value as well. It's sending the URL as null. 
for oh. some reason. Uh, that's not good. Why is it doing that? Body is this. Huh. <laughs> that is strange. Oh, is that HD URL? Mm, okay, probably it doesn't have. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so, so we'll pick the wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now we should be able to get that. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, there you go. So okay. it got the URL. So in this case, sometimes they have a, an image, sometimes they have a video. Um, and then you can bind this to a YouTube thing and then get that. So this one was an example of just sending one thing. One thing, okay. And now I can delete this. And what I'll do is I'll paste uh, a new action response. Uh, it's it's under request and it's called a response. Okay. This is a premium. But again, if you're using HTTP, you're already using premium. premium. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we'll do is we already have the schema here from yeah. the JSON thing, so we can just paste that. Otherwise, if you if you as you saw, we need to click on generate from sample, mm -hmm. paste and that, that, and then yeah. generate that. So we'll paste that, and then the content for this. If not use the JSON, we we'll just use it from the HTTP directly. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we don't need this need as such. Again. This. Okay. Yeah. So I can just hit save. Uh, now my Power App won't like that uh, because yeah, it's one thing is it will still try to look refer to the old flow for some reason. It won't like it. So what we'll do is we'll remove this, and then um, now in this case we'll use a collection because. It's it's a collection. It's not just one value that we're getting. Mm -hmm. So we've used in now so this cover a point. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And we've because uh, I've not added the power automate yet. Let me just copy this. Again, uh, a pro tip, always copy the expression before you're adding a new flow on that button. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it will erase everything. Yes, I was just going to say that that in my experience, uh, so caution, if you want to call a flow, make sure you copy everything because the moment you bring the flow in there, it wipes everything out. I hope the team is, you know, listening and has some good feedback. So probably just insert it where the case is. I mean, hopefully. Yeah. Or just create a dummy button Yeah. where you can add your own flow. So I do it either way. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you have to get around all these fun hacks. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, in this case, I'm just collecting it into a collection. Mm. And then I don't have, so one thing which you'll notice is if I do put a dot after it, but I, okay, in this case, I didn't pass JSON, that's why I'm not giving any values. But, uh, but yeah, I get the whole thing in a collection. So, okay. so hmm. quick, Vivek, if you put this in a collection, is it going to auto set it because it's kind of like JSON coming in into a response? Would it, you know, put them in the various? Can I just go call the collection dot something and put it in there? Uh, so it will create. Are you saying it will create the columns and stuff? Yes. Yeah. So you'll see in a while. So, uh, so it did put the values, but I'll show you the collection here, which is SI A part, and it ah. automatically created those columns and everything with the values. And just so that you don't think that I already have that, I'll do a new one just to show you that it works for anything else as well. I'll hit on this, and then I'll show you a collection, NASA A41, ah, okay. same thing. So it has the date, explanation, URL, title, everything. So I generally use this because I get everything and then I can use whatever I want in the Power App. Even if there is, so sometimes some APIs give you a table within, so maybe mm. uh, the URL is a table of things. There might be yeah. um, like an image. There'll be like a HD image, there'll be a mm -hmm. 200 pixel yeah. image and all that. 
So it will be a tab table, but the JSON, if you put the right sample, it will understand that and it will create this collection with a table in it within a value. So you can do a lot of good stuff with that. And actually, uh, maybe I, was just going to, I was just going to ask whether you have dealt with such a situation before where you have an API yeah. returning. Okay. So this one, if you see Vision API results ah, from the Google okay. API, it gives me um, web detection. So it's all, all of these are tables. I can just click on a table. Within a table, there are more tables. Yeah. So I need to refer to, so yeah, there are, they need to do some first, last and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you get everything. The good part is you get everything and then you do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. Uh, I think I have covered most of the stuff. <laughs> uh, and I did want to share this. Let me put my... So, yeah, I tried to show almost everything in this. And, all, and I put in this presentation, I put all my videos with the links in it, which are specifically API stuff. Okay. Uh, there are making phone calls using Microsoft. Power That's Automate cool. and IFTTT, so you can do a custom message, all this. My videos are mainly API stuff, so yeah. <laughs> if you go to my channel, you'll get nothing but API stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can you can go on to all these videos and uh, come on, let's go to the next one. It's not liking, it's trying to load the videos for some reason. Um, but yeah, what? What I've done is I've put the links to all those things, and then you can. Oh, it's trying to load everything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, uh, come on, stop this. <laughs> well, at least it give, it's giving us a taste of it. We know how that is. So, uh, how would you how would you solve this problem? Trying uh, it's to load everything. Playing all the videos on it? my side. I need to stop that. But how how would you how would you solve this problem? Sorry, right, give me one minute. Yes, um, okay. Sorry about that. I, are you hearing anything? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hearing okay. anything. So that's a good sign. But I'm saying that I okay. mean, in 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 the situation where you know it's calling. It's actually showing or playing all the videos. Like this, is just how would you how would you solve it? Oh, how would I solve it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the the one thing which I did change on my YouTube deck was I just showed the the thumbnail, mm. and uh, only if somebody clicks on it, it will start loading the kind of the video component of it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this is PowerPoint. I can't manage PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I'm not going to play mode, but yeah, all the videos. There is push bullet. Um, mm. That's a good way to send push URLs to your, you can install it as a plugin on your Chrome um, browser or Edge browser. So I use it to open meeting links. Oh. So two minutes before any meeting starts, it automatically starts the Skype link or the Teams link, and it opens the video. I mean, the, the meeting for me. I don't have to do anything. Um, okay. So yeah, you can. There yeah, are custom. So custom connector I didn't touch, but you can create all the HTTP requests that I did. You can instead use a custom connector for that, okay. and uh, use that in the flow. Uh, but yeah, all these APIs are something that I've used. Uh, programmable web is another place to find some good APIs. Uh, so yeah, do um, look out for that one. And then um, one last thing which I will ask for you guys is if you can go to this URL with Sam. I don't know if you can paste it. Uh, um, yeah, if you can put it in the chat. Into yeah, our, I'll pay, yeah, I'll just copy yeah. that. Uh, it's a very small feedback form. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it pasted in big text for some reason. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'll just I'll just copy it. 
you know. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just copied it. Uh, but yeah, so, and I have a flow for that. Uh, once you submit, you'll get presentation deck. <laughs> <laughs> that was a smart one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, you can do. Um, so yeah, I think the message that I wanted to give today was this thing that I'm not a pro dev, and I did this over the past one and a half year, and I've learned a lot. I have connected to things which I never imagined. I've connected to Siri. I've connected to Alexa, um, and triggered flow from it. But yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. It's it just if there is an API for things, you can do a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, don't be scared. Do it. Um, there are a lot of videos available to just start building something. And I hope with today's video, you will go and at least try to make something with an API. This has been awesome. Let me actually flip here. So if you can just change back to your if you yeah, can just yeah. go over the screen, the slide. Yeah. So I just have you. Yes. So, guys, this has been entertaining, educative. The fact that you people wanted wanted us to go over time, just so we show this means you know how important it is to you guys. And the API guy Vivek, we're very honored to have you on the show. This has been an awesome way to spend my one hour Sunday learning something new from you know from you I was making a lot of notes as we were talking because, <laughs> you know my demo for our next hangout I, I've seen that you've done a couple of things so I'm going to borrow some of your things from there yeah yeah you know, and I'm gonna borrow that. a lot of stuff from you <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 yeah yes yes it, there's always something new to learn and the fact that I love the community that the power platform has you know a lot of content a lot of great people and it's amazing what you can do with it and i'm really honored to have you on the show i was just trying to fill out your your you know the the feedback which is very important so all of us watching all around the world connect con subscribe to his channel great awesome content connect with him make sure you feel the feedback because it's the feedback that you know tells us whether we're doing a good job a bad job how to you know do we tweak it do we bring in more content it's very very important so yeah. uh, if you follow my stream I have API guy, Mariano, um, Alan. I have all the power, most of the power addict on my channel that you can, as featured channels that you can also subscribe to. See, the learning never stops. And this is one thing, in as much as COVID-19 is a terrible thing, I believe that it's giving us an opportunity for us to learn more. You know, we always had the excuse, I don't have time. Now you're pretty much home most of the time. You know, spend some one hour, 30 minutes, learn something new. Follow guys like, yeah. you know, the API guy, Mariano, Alan, uh, Brian. Crazy people doing crazy things. So, we're honored to have you on the show. Thank you very much. And I know that yeah. you're going to come back again to do something very specific. I won't, I won't say that on the show yet. So, it's an honor to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And to thank our, you so much. Yeah. our audience... It's been awesome having you until we come your way again with another episode of the Power Series. This has been your really Samla Drani. Catch you next week. And enjoy your, the rest of the week. And please stay safe. Stay safe. We need you alive so we can share great content can with you. Can we share what's coming next week? Yes. Yes. We can do that. We can do that. I was just, <laughs> I was just about to show that. So, as we all know... You know, we like to unveil, and here we go. So if you're looking at it, we have April coming up next weekend. Um, uh -huh. Awesome, awesome, she awesome content. Yeah. Later. So let's, um, let's you know, be expectant, and let's pray that, you know, the world is safe from all this craziness. But then, until I come your way next week, this has been the Power Series. Catch you on the flip side. Thank you.